Good afternoon. I'm often the guy who gets to stand up and read his little poem about cats right after a good performance of Macbeth. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm uh, grateful to, uh, to have shared this place with you. Thank you. In the time that's available to me, I'm going to suggest that you engage in a ministry of cooking and of prayer for your church council. Cooking and prayer. My target audience is pastors among you, church council officers, other people who just care about the councils that work in the congregations of which you are a member. I'm going to suggest that you do some things which are probably things you do already, but I'm going to, announce, I'm going to suggest that you do them in particular ways. First, some preparation. You need to invite the members of your church council, the church council of your congregation, to come to a meeting about a half an hour early. It doesn't matter necessarily if they do or not, you're going to provide something for them to eat that they can eat whenever they arrive, but if they get there a little bit early, you'll be able to uh, talk to them, they'll be able to talk to each other, it'll be a little bit more fun. Next, you'll need to arrive in the church kitchen about two hours early because I mean for you to do this cooking in the church kitchen. I think uh, that, that the, the, the smell of actually prepared food does not permeate our church structures often enough. And if you belong to a place where you think there's gonna be some pushback about that, somebody's gonna complain because uh, the church begins to smell a little bit like onions or chili powder, if somebody's gonna complain about that where you are, you need to belong to a different church as soon as possible. Also, if you need to get permission to work in the church kitchen by yourself, you should consider worshiping someplace else. Cooking in the church kitchen with a group of people is, is really fun and really an important activity, but that's not what I have in mind right now. I have in mind you working there by yourself, and if you're not one of the people with the special permission to do that, then that's not a good church kitchen. You need to do a little preparation at the grocery store beforehand. You need a little oil or margarine. You may be able to find that in your church kitchen. You need about three quarters of a pound or a pound of ground beef. You need a small package of tofu. You need two large onions, fresh as you can get them. You need six jalapeno peppers. You don't actually have to have them, I suppose, for your purposes, but I have a theological purpose behind the jalapeno peppers, so, I, so I'm gonna suggest that you buy them. You need a medium can of four kinds of beans, black beans, red kidney beans, pink kidney beans, and pinto beans. You need two large cans of crushed tomatoes, and you need some chili powder. You may have some of that at home, or that you may find that in the church kitchen too. You don't need to buy any of that if you can find it elsewhere. You need two large pots, but not too big, and a small frying pan or a saute pan. That ought to be available in your church kitchen. You need a sharp knife and a can opener, and I would be surprised if you can find them in your church kitchen. <laughs> Most Lutheran churches, it would be easier to embezzle the offering than to find a good knife on the premises. <laughs> so bring a knife from home. Begin by taking your two pots, and in one of them, you brown the ground beef, and in, other you, in the other, you kind of brown the tofu. If you're familiar with tofu, it, it gets a lot of water out of it. Any way you can do that ahead of time is a good idea. Sometimes people put the tofu on a plate, and then you put another plate on top of it, and then you put a book on top of that. You want most of the water out of the tofu. Crumble it up in there. The beef and the tofu are the foundation of what you're making. So while they're cooking, while they're browning, while they're getting hot, remember the foundation of your congregation. Remember the people who have been there before you. Remember the sacrifices that people had to make to organize that place and to build it. Remember the adventure that people had, perhaps you hope, settling into behaviors, settling into expectations. So while you're doing that, while you're browning the ground beef and sweating the water out of the tofu, pray. Pray in gratitude for the people and the lives that came before you and that you will mostly never know. After you've browned the ground beef, you need to drain off the fat, 
after you've done what you've done with the tofu, which is basically to warm it up and to color it a little bit, you need to drain the water off that. While you're doing that, pray that your congregation has the wisdom to know what parts of your foundation are no longer helpful and should be disposed of. Now you're gonna peel the onions and chop them. You don't wanna chop them too small, you don't wanna lose them in the mix of the chili, but you wanna make sure that they're not so big that people choke on them, they'll remember that. If you've gotten any kind of fresh onion, chopping them will bring tears to your eyes. So while you're doing that, remember the people in your congregation who have reason to cry. Some of them you will know, some of them cry publicly, some of them, if you ask, how are you, burst into tears. Some of them keep all their tears carefully hidden. But in every congregation, there are people whose lives are, are tearful. While you're messing with the onions, remember those people. Pray that your church council not forget them. Clean and chop the jalapeno peppers, if you're brave enough to have gotten them. Jalapeno peppers are easily available in the vegetable part of your store. You don't want canned ones. They're mushy to start with. Cut the stem end off the jalapenos and cut them in half and then scrape out and dispose of all the white parts, the inside and the seeds. Some people like the seeds in their chili. I've never been one of those kind of people. Um, throw away the white parts and the seeds, cut them up into small parts and put them into saute to, to, to brown a little bit too with the onions and be careful. Again, if you're using real jalapeno peppers, they will irritate your skin a little bit. And if you're, you're careless enough to rub your nose or to rub your eyes, you will remember this adventure for quite some time. Be careful with them. And remember that just like these peppers can irritate your skin and irritate your eyes, there are plenty of people in your congregation who are more than a little bit irritating. Pray for the people in your congregation who are irritating. Pray for the people who are difficult. Pray for the people who are easily upset. Pray for the people who have a hard time getting with the program, whatever that is. They are also part of the flavor of the community of Christ to which you belong. A congregation that, that is dominated by irritating people is never going to thrive. But a congregation that makes it a practice to drive the irritating people out, and I have served in places like that, a congregation that makes it a practice to drive the irritating people out is not really a Christian church. Pray for the people in your place who are difficult. So you saute the onions and the peppers together. You add half of each to each pot of, of chili that you've started, so the ground beef gets half of it, the tofu gets half of it. Then cover the surface of what's in those pots with the chili powder. People are more inclined to use too little chili powder than too much. You want to make it red all over the top. And you probably saw this one coming. As you see that in the pot, as you watch that red accumulate on the top of there, remember the Holy Spirit. Pray for the presence of the Holy Spirit in the congregation and pray for the Holy Spirit to, to guide and to mold the life of the church council for whom you're preparing this food. You have the saddest and the most difficult people there in that pot, so to speak. You have the foundation. Pray that the Holy Spirit can blend all of that into a life that you are offering to the world for Christ's sake. Pray that out of that mix you've started, something great can come. Now you open and you drain the cans of beans. My ideal for this would be to make the chilies look different. So one of them's darker and one of them's lighter. So if it were I, I would put the dark beans in one and the light beans in the other. But you don't have to do that. If you want to make them look the same, you can mix the beans up and do that. Make sure you drain them. The liquid in the beans is not helpful to you. Um, the, the beans are really the life of your chili. So, so you want to remember that they are the solid structure that's going to sustain this meal. And as you put them in there and you stir them around, remember the members of your congregation present 
with you when you're there on Sunday morning. Pray for some of them by name. Pray for as many of them as you can think of while you're doing this. At least pray for the ones who sit near you on Sunday. Pray for the members of the church council. And thank God for the variety of these people. That's, that's the reason for mixing the beans up, right? To sort of be an image of the way that in the, in the kingdom of God that has its representation among us in our places, there is already, thank God, beginning to be this diversity, this chance for things to be a little different than they used to be. Thank God for the, the structure of, of community life in our Christian congregations that is Jesus' gift to the world through us. Open the cans of crushed tomatoes. There's a big debate about this. Some people would rather use tomato sauce and tomato paste. I believe that's a huge mistake. Don't, don't go there. You want real tomatoes, but if they're crushed, then they make into the chili, and you don't have to chop them up, you know? So add a can of crushed tomatoes to each one of your pots, and remember as you do that, the actual life of our Lord. The, um, the ancient fathers, the church fathers used to talk about the death of Jesus as, as the life being crushed out of him. I don't know why they did that exactly, except that I think for the ancient church fathers and mothers, life was pretty crushing anyway. As you stir the tomatoes in, remember that, that, that everything we have to do with each other is actually Jesus' work among us. Thank God for the gift of Jesus in your prayers, and think for a minute about what Jesus means in your own life. Not in the abstract, but what Jesus really means to you in that moment. Add about a cup of water to each pot, and remember your baptism. Now, you could eat the chili the way it is as soon as it gets hot now, but you don't really want to do that because it'll be much better if you let it cook for about an hour. If I've, done, if I've timed this properly, it takes about an hour to get to this point in the preparation, and then you have about an hour to, uh, to let the, the, the chili cook, to let the flavors blend, to let it thicken up a little bit. Some people like their chili thicker than others. You can add water if you want. But as you have that hour, read something you enjoy, and spend at least some time now again in prayer. Pray for each church council member by name. Pray for that person by name. Pray for any problems that you can see coming in the church council meeting that night. Pray that the council be able to recognize the opportunities that are gonna be available to it as it meets. And pray that the council remember that its business is with the people who do not belong to your congregation yet. We are really good in church council meetings, and haven't I been to lots of them, really good at taking care of ourselves and our infrastructure and our members and our friends. But that's not our business. Our business is the world around us. Pray that the church council remember that. After about a half an hour, you can check the seasonings. You can taste the chili. Uh, does it need more salt or does it need more, pe more pepper? Does it need chili powder? What would you like? What do you want it to taste like? And when you do that, remember to pray for yourself, too. Finally, people should begin to gather, and you should serve them. I would, if it were I, I would just serve them the chili. I would not freight it up with a lot of stuff. Um, some chili these days comes with so many toppings that you're not quite sure what's underneath all that stuff. I would not include that. I would just have the chilies and some fruit juice or some coffee. But if people absolutely can't bear to eat naked chili, then, um, then you put sour cream on it. Um, cheddar cheese is, is standard. For people, you've prepared a kind of vegan chili, really. For people who would like to flavor that, a little bit of dark chocolate would be fine, too. That's considered to be fairly fancy. The idea behind all this is, first of all, to make your church smell like food and to give people something to eat when they gather, and to make the church council meeting a spiritual activity for which at least you have prepared. Hopefully other people have prepared too, but at least you. A council is a board of directors of a small corporation, and when the council forgets that, bad things happen. People call the synod office. Don't forget <laughs> that what you have to do is to protect the assets and the life of the corporation. But if that's all that the church council is, then who needs it? 
A church council is also a band of spiritual brothers and sisters to whom a special kind of ministry has been committed. People should feel like their ministry on a church council is making a difference. They should feel like they're being appreciated and prayed for. They should feel like while they're doing it, they're learning something about themselves and about their faith so that when they finish their terms, they're better Christians and not worse ones, which one suspects is often the case. Counsel cannot be an indefinite commitment for people, but it's a chance for them to grow in faith. And I'm offering, just as a suggestion, a way for you to encourage that, to feed people's bodies, hopefully at least to feed your own soul, and to remember in prayer the ministry of your church council. Thanks very much.